guys, today we're going to do our next step of the batik, which is going to be painting it with the crayons. Yesterday we drew our picture, transferred it to fabric, taped it down to cardboard, and today we're going to start painting. This is what you're going to need. I have an electric skillet. It's filled with water. And then I have a cupcake tin and I've placed pieces of crayons already peeled of course in there to melt. If your crayon has a lot of flecks of other colors on it just go ahead and wipe it off with a paper towel before you melt it so your color is not dingy. I have a selection of paintbrushes and some toothpicks just in case I need them and I had already started just because I wanted to see how it worked before I talked to you about it. So I have my picture faced towards you. I'm painting it upside down and that's okay. The important thing to remember when you're doing this is you need your plan ahead of time because whatever color you put down on the bottom is the color that's going to show up after our final step. So here I have two different colors of gray and I put my darkest gray down first to be the shadow and then I put some little lighter, uh, lighter gray next to it and where it's overlapping it doesn't matter because when I take it off, it's going to be the darker gray that shows up because it's underneath the lighter gray. So you want to keep your pan pretty hot so that the wax stays very liquid. If you turn your heat down too low, then your wax is going to start hardening too quick as you're using it. You can either wipe off your paintbrush when you start to get little chunks of wax on it. You can wipe off your paintbrush with a paper towel or you can keep a cup of really hot water next to you so that your brush doesn't get too messed up, whichever you prefer. But again, you do have to have that plan. Now, if you're going to make something white, again, you have to use the white crayon to color it in. You can't just let it stay white like you might on paper. And this is because our next step is going to be, after it dries, is going to be to crinkle the, the paper up, sorry, the fabric up in our hands so that we have a series of little cracks all over the wax. And again, you can see some places where my white is going on top of the gray, and that doesn't bother me at all because it's only going to be the gray that shows up there. If you do make a mistake and you want to try to fix it, when the wax is dry, you can scrape off as much as you can and then lay another color on it, but you're probably not going to be able to get rid of all of the color. If you need to blend colors and mix them, do it in your muffin pan. You can add white or black so you get values, tones, shades, all that. So I'm going to keep painting this and I'll show it to you tomorrow with our next step. Um, for cleanup, when you're ready to clean this up, all you have to do is turn it off, let your muffin pan cool down, and then you can take the muffin pan out and you'll be able to pop what will then be giant flat round crayons out of the muffin pan. If there's some little bits in there, you can put the muffin pan in the oven for a couple minutes to heat up the wax again and then wipe it out. Remember not to dump it down the sink. If you don't have a muffin pan, you could do something like put colors, um, sorry, crowns in little glass baby food jars and put them inside the water. You could use a those little candle warmers, the, the fragrance warmers, to keep everything warm and do it one color at a time if you need to. Just remember, if you do drop wax on anything, then let it dry first and then scrape it off. Don't try to clean it up wet because it will smear and make a giant mess. All right, I'll see you tomorrow for our next step.